uh, we started talking on Monday about uh, various techniques for refining uh, schemas, basically getting, uh, figuring out ways of identifying redundancy in the schema and in, in a schema and uh, cutting back on it with, uh, with sort of the intent of um, either guiding users towards better schemas or using functional dependencies, using this uh, idea of redundancy uh, to come up with a better storage representation uh, for, uh, for the database to use on its own. And uh, just as a couple of quick recaps, uh, a function, the, the core idea, the core notion of, of redundancy uh, came about through this idea of functional dependencies. Uh, so if we knew that uh, there was a functional dependency uh, if we know that there is a functional dependency from x to y, uh, that basically means that if two tuples uh, in any instance of, uh, of a relation, uh, if, uh, if it agrees on the columns in the set x, then it must also agree uh, on the columns in the set y. Uh, and of course, this, this idea of functional dependencies uh, isn't necessarily uh, a comment about specific instances of R, uh, but rather uh, a more general idea uh, about the schema. Uh, so this is user-provided information, uh, such as, for example, uh, a salary is uh, dependent on a user's rank, uh, on a, a officer's rank. And as a consequence of that, we can only validate uh, a particular instance to see if it satisfies the functional dependency. We can't actually uh, detect functional dependencies in instances of R. Uh, quick example, uh, to recap the example, uh, we have a table of contracts. Each contract uh, is for a particular supplier, a particular project uh, at a particular department with a particular part and has some, uh, some, some attributes, quantity, and, and value as well. Um, we can talk about a couple of different functional dependencies. Uh, so if there's a key, uh, in this case, uh, CID, the, the contract ID is a key, uh, which means there's a functional dependency from that key uh, to all of the remaining columns. Um, we can also say, uh, if, if we know uh, through, uh, the domain, through domain knowledge that every single project only purchases uh, for every single part purchased by a specific project, uh, there is always exactly one um, contract, then we can infer uh, a functional dependency of the form uh, JP, so JID and PID uh, have a dependency to, uh, a functional dependency to C. Or C has a functional dependency on uh, J and P. Uh, we can also, if we know that each department purchases at most one part from any given supplier, then that's essentially uh, functional dependency from the part ID uh, to the supply. Uh, the part ID depends on uh, the supplier and uh, and department. And from this, we can actually infer a bunch of new proper uh, new functional dependencies. So we can uh, cascade. Uh, we can combine these functional dependencies in various ways, and we talked about a couple of rules for doing this on Monday. Uh, so, for example, if we know that uh, s there's a functional dependency from C to the entire rest of the relation, and if we know that there is a functional dependency from JP to C, uh, there's a transitive uh, relationship there as well. Uh, so, one and two together imply that there's a that JP uh, has a functional dependency to the rest of the relation. Uh, similarly, if we know uh, if we know that S D has a functional dependency to P, uh, we can add additional columns to either side without uh, to both sides simultaneously without impacting the functional dependency, and we can get a functional dependency from S D J uh, to J P, which in uh, turn means that we can get a functional dependency from S D J uh, to the entire relation. Okay. Uh, so we started talking about this idea of decomposition, uh, taking a relation and breaking it up into parts. And the, the key question we were trying to address was, uh, when is it a good idea to do this? When, when should we take a relation and break it apart uh, into smaller relations? Uh, and the sort of cornerstone uh, to the, the answer to that is this idea of normal forms. 
So a normal form uh, is, is basically a, a particular decomposition or a particular representation of a set of relations um, in which certain uh, problems are minimized. A certain instantiation of a schema for a particular domain uh, in which certain kinds of, uh, of uh, problems are avoided or minimized. Uh, say that, that there's a certain uh, minimal level of redundancy in that particular schema if it's in one of the normal forms. And the idea is that we can take any schema with some redundancy in it, and we can eliminate some or all of that uh, redundancy by uh, decomposing it until it's in one of the normal forms. Uh, the way we're going to do that is through uh, functional dependencies. So for example, if we know uh, that for R, every single uh, if we know that there's a functional dependency from A to B, then um, we want to avoid instances of this uh, relation where there are duplicate copies of A. So if we have uh, two different, uh, the same value, if A is not a key, then this basically means that there's some uh, degree of redundancy in this particular relationship, this particular relation. I'll give a more concrete example in a couple of slides. Uh, right, so um, any questions up to this point, by the way? This is basically more or less recap from Monday. Uh, so we talked about this idea of voice cod normal form, um, where we can basically, uh, so just to recap the notation, uh, this means the closure of the set of functional dependencies, so all of the, the functional dependencies that you can infer from the original set, which we're going to call f. Uh, so, the idea of voice cod normal form is that the only functional dependencies you see in this particular, uh, in, in a schema that satisfies, in a relation that is in voice cod normal form, uh, the only functional dependencies that you will see are ones that are either trivial, um, so we, any functional dependency uh, from x to a subset of x is a functional dependency. If it agrees on the bigger set, it had better agree on the smaller set. So that's, we can't eliminate those, we don't want to. Those, those are not indicative of redundancy. Um, but the only kind of functional dependencies we want to see are ones where, um, where x is, a, is or contains a key. Uh, so to give you sort of a, a taste of that on, on this, uh, if we have a functional dependency from a to b, and the same a value occurs multiple times in R, then the same b value will also occur multiple times in R. That's redundancy. But if a is a key, then a can only occur once, so that corresponding value of b can also, will, well, it may occur multiple times, but it's not guaranteed to occur multiple times. So that's not redundant. So, this is about where we stopped, I believe. Um, the, something that we're going to uh, talk about today, and, and pretty much the, the, the core of today's lecture, is going to be about this, uh, this notion that you can't always decompose into voice cod normal form. I'll give you one example that I'll come back to a bit later. Uh, but let's say you have a table of ship, crew, uh, ship, roll on the ship, and uh, the officer's name. Now, for a particular ship and a particular role, there's exact, going to be exactly one officer that fills that particular role. And for any given officer, that officer will also fill exactly one uh, role. Now, the, the, there are two different keys in this particular representation. Um, so, given the ship and the crew role, we can always infer the officer. And similarly, given the officer and the ship, or even just the officer, sorry, that should just be officer. Given the officer, well, an officer might uh, serve on multiple ships. We don't actually have that reverse function dependency here. Uh, but given an officer and a crew role, we can infer, uh, sorry, an officer and a ship, we can infer the crew role. Uh, right. So
so get back to what those circle um, is. Sorry. Uh, so why why can't this be decomposed into Boyce-Codd normal form? So if we get rid of any one of these columns, something goes wrong. And I will try and get uh, so if you if you get rid of any of these columns, then all of a sudden it becomes impossible to enforce at least one of these constraints. And it becomes impossible to enforce it in, in such a way that we this this relation cannot actually be decomposed further. And I will get into that in this slide. Yes. Um not necessarily. An officer, uh, I mean, that depends on the schema, but uh, in this particular, uh, for this particular example, even that functional dependency will, uh, will prevent it from, uh, even that uh, functional dependency will prevent it from being, um, I'll, I'll, I will get back to, I will get back to the slide towards. So, in this, in this relation, um, yes, but according to this functional dependent, uh, according to the functional dependencies here, uh, if they have the same name, they had better have the same role. There can be two McCoys, but they both better be doctors. It's not necessarily a key. Um, given the functional dependencies I've, I've given you here. Uh, officer itself is not necessarily a key. So you have an officer and the final dependency is a key. So officer should be a key. Uh, you are correct. This should actually so be. So officer is a super key. Yeah, it is. Uh, you're correct. That should be just officer. OK. Uh, I'll get back to that slide in, in a couple of uh, first, I want to introduce a slight reduction in uh, a slightly reduced form of normalization, uh, where we're allowed to have values of a that are um, where we're allowed the the dependent set of attributes. So either the the um, the attributes on which the the functional dependency depends uh, have to be a key, as in voice not voice cod normal form. Or uh, the attributes, uh, the attributes, the dependent attributes uh, had better have um, had, had better be a subset of some key. Right, had better be a subset of some key. And this is referred to as third normal form. It's uh, as I said, a slightly weaker form of uh, Boy Scout normal. And it is it permits any sort of relation. Uh, sorry, not any sort. Um, as you'll see in a moment, there are certain cases where voice cod normal form uh, simply cannot, uh, where you cannot get a relation into voice cod normal form. Uh, but even in those cases, you'll be allowed to create a relation in third normal form. So the BCNF or oh, sorry, that should be 3NF. Yeah, so 3NF, uh, this is BCNF, and then 3NF three, uh, three adds a, a additional, um, uh, an additional possibility. So this, this weakens, uh, is a slightly weaker normal. Uh, right, so if the idea is basically then um, that Third normal form. There, are, there are basically two ways that third normal form can be violated. Um, either, uh, if there is a third normal form violation, if the, sorry, if some functional dependency x uh, a depends on x, 
uh, is violated, uh, violates third normal form, uh, then there had better be uh, one of the following two possibilities is, is occurring. Either X is a subset of some keys, uh, in which case we're, we're storing a bunch of XAs redundantly, um, or X is, is not a subset of, of any key, uh, in which case we have some uh, redundancy, uh, namely the um, X obviously depends on the key because the key, uh, there's a function, always a functional dependency from uh, the entire relation to the, the key, and now x depends on a, no, sorry, a depends on x. So, uh, so basically, the, um, uh, we could just as easily partition this into two relations, um, one where you have uh, store the key and x, and another relation where you store x and a. And in that case, you'd end up with uh, storing less. So if, if you have two copies of the same uh, two copies of the same set of values for x, then the the corresponding a values are going to be duplicated as well. So you can basically split those apart easily. But this this kind of um, this, this particular uh, violation is, is still, it could happen in third normal form. And that's basically why, uh, that, that's sort of the, the extra bit of permissiveness that makes third normal form uh, able to, able to store, um, uh, okay. Um, Uh, okay, so so getting back to this slide, we, we started off with this idea of so this isn't in voice code normal form because we have um, because we have a dependency uh, so ship and crew role is a key. Uh, we'll call it. So the um, right. This should actually be ship and officer. So there, there are two keys for this relation. If we have a ship and a crew role, we can always determine the officer. If we have a ship, uh, excuse me, if we have a uh, crew role and, uh, sorry, if we have a ship and an officer, uh, well, if we have the officer, we can determine the crew role, uh, but the ship uh, is also needed because there's no way of determining that from just the officer. Um, in this particular example, uh, the officer there might an officer might simultaneously serve on multiple ships as long as they're in the same uh, serving in the same role. Um, right. So the problem here is that this is not in voice code normal form. Um, the first functional dependency is fine, uh, but the second functional dependency is uh, so recall the the restriction was that either it's trivial or uh, this is a super key. And in this case, officer is not a super key. Um, it's a sub key of this, and it's a sub key of this, uh, but it's not a, uh, it, there is redundancy here. Um, so if Kirk did happen to serve, uh, let's say McCoy, happened to serve on two different ships, 
then um, we'd end up with uh, two copies of the same crew rule. The distinction here is, is with third normal form, however, is that we're, allowed, we're allowing, so essentially the problem, the, the problem that's, that's going on here is that there's this sort of cyclical dependency. So ship and crew role cause a dependency on officer, and then officer uh, cycles back to crew role. Because of that, we can't actually separate anything out without violating at least one of these constraints. Um, so getting back to, to third normal form, the, the reason that third normal form uh, allows this is uh, allows this particular limitation is because on the right hand side here we have a, a subset of one of the keys. So the key ship crew role, and this functional dependency maps back to uh, a key. So essentially what we're allowing here uh, is if there is such a, a cyclical dependency, we're essentially allowing this kind of cyclical dependency as long by, by essentially making, allowing functional dependencies that go backwards, so to speak. So we have a functional dependency from the main key to officer, and then we have a, a functional dependency that comes backwards, and we're going to allow that because the backwards-facing dependency has uh, points to one of the keys. Um, so that particular relation could still have uh, redundancy in it, um, but it's redundancy that really can't be eliminated because of the way it's being uh, stored. Right. Okay. So, so now that we've defined normal forms, uh, or at least two specific types of normal forms, uh, let's talk a bit about how we get into those normal forms. Uh, so I'll, I'll formally define. I'll, I'll start by formally defining this idea of, of decomposition. So we have a, a relation that contains some set of attributes. A decomposition is uh, basically a selection of relations uh, such that each uh, newly created relation has uh, a subset of the original relation's attributes. It can be any any subset. Um, but each, each relation has some subset of those, and uh, the, the original relation uh, is basically the union of all of the, uh, the attributes of, of the, the decomposed relations. Uh, so basically we, we don't add any attributes, and uh, we don't take away any attributes. A simple example here. Um, as a simple example here, uh, we have a, an officer's table which contains uh, OID name, post, rank, and salary. OID is a key, so there's a functional fun there's a functional dependency from that uh, to the full relation, and uh, we know that salary depends on rank. So. Uh, there are two conditions for third, third normal, uh, three conditions to uh, allow something to be in third normal form. Um, this uh, passes the second one, that is to say, uh, the left hand side had better be a, uh, a super key. In this case, it is a key, so that's satisfied. Uh, the right hand side, on the other hand, uh, R is not a super key, um, nor nor is, uh, nor is it a trivial functional dependency. And the third condition was that this had better be a subset of a key. And in this case, there's only one key, OID. So S is, is not a subset of the key either. Uh, so basically, RS violates third normal form. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't meet, meet the, uh, the constraints for a functional dependency on, on a third normal form, third normal form relation. So what we can do instead is break this up into two smaller relations, uh, one where we store OID name, post, rank, 
uh, and uh, another one where we store the salary for each rank. Oh, that's trivial, right? But um, the yeah, that, that's that's trivial. But um, the problem then is that uh, what do you call it? Right. So how do we how do we get to this in some sort of uh, al uh, algorithmic way? What, what is the the process for for getting down to that? Uh, and the other thing is, uh, so there's there's at least one other um, there's at least one other way that we could um, address this. We could uh, just pull salary out into some other table. So uh, a perfectly valid decomposition of this in, of this relation uh, would be OID and salary. So that's that's a legitimate decomposition of that relation. Uh, but what? Um, does anyone see a problem with decomposing it into OID and salary, and then everything but salary? The second table will have the same number of tables. Say again? The second, second table will have the same number of tables. Uh, the second, what about this? Uh, sorry. Then you divide it into two tables. Yes. The second table will have the same number of tables as the first one. It wouldn't okay, so it wouldn't re result in any reduction of data. You're not eliminating any of the redundancy. Uh, there's actually an even even more overt problem. Uh, does anyone see it? We won't be able to join them back. Well, uh, we'll have OID. We can join them back on OID, which is a key. Functional dependency R2S is not met. Uh, what do you mean by not met? I mean. S is not totally dependent on R naught. Well, yeah, but there's no table with. ODS is still violating the, 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 the mm. R2 is still dependency. It is still violating third error in order. Well, so it, I, I guess what, what you guys are getting at is that this violates the the uh, we, we split up we've split it apart into two uh, two separate tables. Um, but it's and, still violating condition. Right. So it, it, well. It, it's it's even worse than that. The, this particular representation. How would you even validate the condition? You'd have to join the tables back together. In other words, that on on the decomposition where we have um, O N uh, P R and O S, there's actually no way to even validate this without reconstructing the original table. So we haven't actually achieved anything with that particular decomposition. So one of the goals here is going to be to um, is is going to be to ensure that the the re reconstitute sorry that the decomposed relation can still be um, used to assert the functional dependencies. So in other words, in, in this case, we can assert this particular functional dependency because both R and S are in the same relation, uh, and this one. Um, we have sort of this chain of functional dependencies, so we can also assert that this holds. Or we can actually break this up into two separate uh, relations, one uh, from O to R and one from O to S. Okay, so, uh, well, there's a couple of obvious uh, issues with, with decomposition. Uh, first off, anytime you decompose two relations, you have to eventually join them back together to get all of the, the original columns, the original attributes. Uh, this is now more expensive. Uh, but even worse, uh, it, if you choose your decomposition poorly, it may not even be possible to uh, reconstruct the original relation uh, at all. Um, let me give you an example of that. So this, this is what's known as a, a lossy decomposition. So we have a relation R. Uh, actually, anyone uh, who's in Dr. Uh, Haminsky's um, Dr. Haminsky's uh, seminar this term, um, you uh, when Dr. Rudra gave gave his talk, you'll you'll have seen pretty much exactly the same the same general concept. Uh, let's say you have some relation R, three columns A, B, and C, and I have the following data in it: uh, one, 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 uh, one, two, 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 one, two, and two, two, one. Now, if I, if I decompose that. I can potentially decompose that into three separate uh, relations, and this is a valid decomposition. 
A, B, and C are all represented, and each of these have uh, one fewer column than the original set. Uh, you'll also note that each of these now has uh, the full uh, set of all possible combinations of 1 and 2. 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2. Just in slightly different orders. Now what happens when we try and do a natural, uh, so how would we reconstitute, first off, how would we reconstitute R? Join, okay, you join, natural join uh, all, all of these together. Now what happens when you natural join all three of those together? Do you get R? No. No. You get eight rows, exactly. You get the missing, uh, so the missing combinations of uh, these four attributes, uh, sorry, these three attributes. So essentially what uh, this decomposition is um, a valid decomposition, but it's also what's known as a lossy decomposition because we're, we're losing information. In particular, we're, lo we're losing uh, the fact that this instance uh, shouldn't contain these particular values. And that gives us the ability to define uh, something called a lossless decomposition. So uh, we call a decomposition lossless um, if joining all of the, the relations back together, uh, all of the, the decom decomposed relations back together, uh, produces the same uh, relation that we started out with. And we can, we can determine whether a particular decomposition will be lossless uh, based on the functional dependencies that are applied to the original relation. Uh, so again, so using uh, each relation as a uh, placeholder for the set of attributes in that relation, um, if the original relation, uh, if the functional dependencies, the closure of the functional dependencies on the original relation uh, contains one of these two functional dependencies, a functional dependency from the, the intersection of, of, all of, um, of all of the attributes. This, if it contains a functional dependency from uh, the, the natural, uh, the, the attributes common to both decomposed <coughs> relations uh, to either of the two relation columns. Uh, in other words, basically, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, what? So, our is AC or AC. Our Okay, uh, right. Although, actually, it's equivalent, really. Um, all three of those decomposed relations in that particular instance are identical. Um, and even if you delete one of them, you still have all three attributes. OK, uh, right. So if we have, a, uh, if we have essentially some key uh, for one of the, the the natural join had better be key for one of the two uh, for one of the two relations. The the overlapping columns between the two relations had better be a key uh, or a super key uh, for one of the two uh, relations that got created. R two R one intersect R two. Uh, I mean the, the intersection of the attributes. Attributes columns. Uh, this er, I mean, column attributes. Yeah. The R1, the R2, the R2. Yeah, I mean the attributes of, uh, of R1 and R2. I'm going to be using, in, in, anytime you see uh, some character or some letter, uh, if it's unclear for the purposes of this lecture, that it basically means a set of attributes. Great. So, so basically, we can, we can determine whether or not a particular um, set of intersections, uh, we can pr determine whether a particular decomposition is going to be lossless uh, based on whether or not uh, the, the overlap between the two 
uh, newly graded relations uh, contain some key for the original relation. So, that, okay. Um, so that's lossless uh, lossless decomposition. Now, how do we how do we get a lossless decomposition for some relation? Well, there's a very trivial, almost trivial algorithm for this uh, that allows us to to ensure that the um, that the relation we create stays lossless. Uh, that the decomposition we create uh, is is a lossless decomposition, uh, but while while still allowing us to uh, create a BCNF representation of, of the data. Uh, so, right. If uh, we start out with some relation R, and uh, that relation R has a set of functional dependencies, we're going to call that F as normal. Uh, and if there is some uh, functional dependency, x, go, uh, x goes to y in F, then uh, then we're basically just going to break that relation apart uh, as, as such. We're going to uh, create one relation that contains every attribute of R except those in the functional dependency, or the, the dependent, dependent attributes. And then we're going to create a second relation uh, that contains uh, the dependent both sets of attributes. Uh, so first off, is it... Uh, This, this uh, so first off, um, this, this is guaranteed to be lossless because, well, this relation is going to contain y uh, def uh, definitively. Uh, if there, yeah. So this uh, R1 is going to contain um, x, or at least the, uh, the subset of x that is not in the intersection of both. Um, similarly, R2 is going to contain uh, x. So we have a dependency from uh, x to x, y. No, sorry, we have a dependency from x to y. We can extend that into a dependency from x to x, y. Obvious reason uh, for the... Uh, according to the rules we, we talked about yesterday. So now we have a dependency from x, to x uh, from a, a set of, of attributes that are common to both of these to x, y. Uh, so this is guaranteed to be a lossless decomposition. And uh, now that we have uh, r1 and r2, all we need to do is sort of split up the functional dependencies between these two and uh, just recur, recursively uh, go apply this, this process to each of those until we have a set of relations that satisfies BCNF. And uh, because each step is going to eliminate one functional dependency, uh, this is basically guaranteed to terminate. Uh, something to note, though, that the, the order in which you, satisfy, uh, you, you fix these violations uh, can produce some pretty drastic changes in the output of the cell. So uh, picking that order carefully is, is important. OK, uh, let's go through an example. Um, so going back to our contracts relation, uh, we have the three, uh, the three original functional dependencies. And I'm going to add a third one, namely that each project is going to restrict itself to exactly one supplier. So J, uh, S depends on J. Uh, we'll go through these. So first off, uh, Number one, C is a key. All good. Uh, what about two? Is this uh, is this a uh, does this constraint vi uh, violate BCNF? Yes. yes. Why? Oh, right. is, is J uh, JP isn't a key? It's not a single key. It's not. Are you sure? Can you decide that it is a key? So we know that C is a key. But what is a key? Exactly. And so basically, if we can decide that there is a functional, 
dependency from JP to the entire tuple, then that is effectively, that effectively means that JP or some subset of JP is a key. Can we do that? So can, uh, can we decide that JP is a, is a key? Yeah. So transitivity, JP goes to C, C goes to the rest. So we have a functional dependency from JP to the full attribute. We can decide that JP is, at the very least, a super key, which is enough to satisfy BCNF. Uh, what about three? Is three, uh, does three violate BCNF? JP, uh, sorry, uh, SD goes to P? Yes. Okay. What do we need to do to fix it? So what, uh, how does our algorithm work? We're going to start off. Uh, I'll go to you. Yes. Well, it's either a key or a super key. How about SD? Um, SD is... Um, can, you, can, you, can you prove that SD is not a key or not a super key? Can you prove that? So you can, you can determine... You can determine that there is no, um, yeah, uh, yes, so you, you can compute the, uh, the, clo the functional dependency closure uh, of all of these. And you will see, uh, and y if you do that, you will see that there is no, um, there is no functional dependency from SD to the entire set of relations. No path from SD to Exactly. Well, for, well, no path from SD to the full set of attributes. Doesn't necessarily have to go through C. Uh, you don't need to find the entire closure, but you need to. Uh, you need to basically you need to figure out whether or not uh, S B maps to um, C S J. Uh, whether this is in the closure, and we discussed on uh, on Monday an algorithm for doing this in, in real time. <coughs> okay, um, right. Okay, so SD is is not a key. Um, how would we how would we apply the algorithm we, we just discussed to getting? Um, to creating uh, two two new tables here. Contact into two tables, one containing all but PID. Okay. All but, yeah. And the other containing SD to P, SD and P. Yep. Okay, so we're going to do that. Call it part sub. Uh, what about, uh, well, I gave it away, but what about uh, this one? Is J a key? Uh, it isn't so. Uh, we're this. This doesn't go into uh, BCNF. Um, how do we fix it? Yeah, same thing. So split it apart into CDJQB, uh, CJDQB, and uh, JS, and you end up with uh, the following decomposition uh, that is guaranteed to be lossless and. Um, Although I haven't gotten to it quite yet, uh, it's also guaranteed to be. Um, okay, uh, right. So coming back to this, uh, we noted that this particular relation doesn't have. Um, we can't really break this relation apart um, because in order to uh, any sort, if we broke away ship, we wouldn't be able to enforce uh, this particular constraint. If we broke away officer, we wouldn't be able to enforce either of these constraints. And if we broke apart crew role, we wouldn't be able to uh, enforce either of those constraints either. So in other words, there's, there's no uh, decomposition that preserves all of the functional dependencies. Uh, and there's another term uh, that 
So we, we talked about lossy decompositions. Uh, now we're going to talk very, very, very briefly about dependency preserving decompositions. Right. Uh, so the the basic um, the basic idea here is that any for any functional dependency on our original relation, we have to have one relation uh, that contains at least that set of attributes. So we can modify the algorithm that we just discussed uh, so that whenever we decompose a function, splitting splitting it across multiple functional multiple uh, splitting a functional dependency across multiple relations. Uh, we just add back another relation uh, that contains all of the relevant attributes. Um, it's great. So it's still possible that x, y, uh, that this attribute may violate, um, may violate through normal form. So let's say we have uh, a relation that contains uh, a, b, c with the following set of functional dependencies. Uh, one from A, B to C, and one from B to C. Uh, and I don't have time to go over minimal cover. So we'll, uh, we will very briefly talk about that on uh, Friday. And uh, continue on with things. Okay. Um,